In this episode, I'm going to cover auto scaling the text size. I'll start off by scaling text automatically, and then after that, I'll scale the text with a gesture. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to go to the IDE, and I have Android Studio set up with a basic bare bones project. This bare bones project has Howdy as the text in the page. So what I want to do is fit this text to the available outer container. And how would I do that? Well. The first way, and I, by the way, I won't cover all the methods you could do with text here and sizing. I'm going to cover a couple. This should get you introduced to the options available, and feel free to ask me questions in the comments below. Okay, so what I want to do is wrap this text in a fitted box. So I'm going to go new fitted box, and the child of that is going to be the text. So I'm going to save it. So hot reload will load it. As you can see, it automatically sized to the available width of the container, keeping its proportion, of course, for the height. Okay, so what if I wanted to size this text with a gesture? How would I do that? Well, I've got to do a little bit more work to wire that up. So let me get started with doing a gesture sizing. Okay, so what I want to do here is restructure the body, and I'm going to work this so it makes a little more sense in a moment. So I'm going to go new center, and this center will have a sized box, which will allow me to control the size. So the child will be new sized box, and its child will be new fitted box. So the fitted box will take up the sized box width and height, so fitted box. And this fitted box will have a child of new, new text. And this text will say, howdy. And let's just save that and see what happens here. Okay, so it takes the minimal size there for text. So the next step is I'm going to give the size box a height. So I'm going to go h i g height underscore h i g h t height for private variable. And then I will dub define it as a double data type, a underscore h e i h g h t equals, I'm not going to define it there, so I'm going to go in it state, and I'll say the height is going to be initially, let's say, um, equals to 50 and 0 0.0 for a double data type, and I'll save it, hot reload it. Okay, that's in, in it state, so I'll run it from the beginning and it gets larger. Okay, so I can initially set it. Let's say I'm gonna initially set it to 20. Okay, so I'm gonna set initial height. Uh, I'm gonna give another variable, and you'll see why I do this. Initial height, and I'll say 20. And this initial height is gonna be, I can't define it up there because that doesn't make a difference. What I want to do is define it in, in its state. So I'll say this height is gonna be initially the initial height and that initial height is going to be 20 um, pixels or 20 points high. Okay, so that gives me initial height. So let me just confirm that works. So I'll run it from the beginning because that's in, in its state and that should get smaller. Excellent. So I'm going to do a little bit math in, here and to show why I do that. So, okay, so I can define that. So now what I want to do is basically do a pinch. Uh, pinch over here like this with fingers and grow the height and uh, or grow the text height and shrink the text height based on scaling. So how would I do that? Well, if I go over here, I need to plug in a gesture detector. And where would I do that? Well, since I want to do it on the scaffold, I got to wrap the scaffold in a gesture detector. So I'm going to Re change the scaffold and move it into the gesture detector. So I'll go new gesture detector on the scaffolding. Its child will be what I just copied. And then I'll do a little formatting and correction of syntax here. Okay, so now I have a gesture tech detector on the scaffold. Okay, so what can I do with that? Well, I can look for adding an on callback handlers for on scale update and on scale in. So on scale update, let's look at that. I can do on scale start and there's a bunch of options in here where I can observe different gestures. But I'm looking for scaling, which will be more or less that pinching um, out and in. Okay, so what I want to do is add on scale update, on scale update. 
Okay, what is on scale update? Let me look at that. Okay, so it looks like it's, let's look at, I'm gonna click on this, gesture scale update, command click. And so it's a type def, and what it is expecting is a func function signature with scale update details. And I'm gonna copy that function parameter there. And I'm gonna bring it back and paste it in line here, because I'm gonna do a small anonymous function in line with a small method body. And I'll do that. Let me come back to that, what I'll put in there. And then I'm gonna go on scale and and let's see what this function, what I need to apply to this. This is a gesture scale and callback. So what data type is that? That is a type def, which is what I think is an interface for a function. So I'm gonna copy this, the same thing, the parameters for that function. And I'm gonna bring it back and paste it and finish the function body there. It's anonymous function in line there with a multi-line body. Okay, so then I can say, Okay, for these details, I can go, let's say, what, what do details provide me? Well, I could look at that data type and see what it houses. Let's see what its members, focal point and scale. I can get those values and use those in my math calculations for setting the height. So on scale update, what I wanna do is uh, define the, or increase or decrease the height and I'm gonna do a little math. I did it before the video, and uh, let's look at how that's gonna look. So I'm gonna go height is gonna be based off the initial height because I wanna say the initial height, and then I wanna multiply that against the scale. And I'm gonna add a little weight uh, variable to that so I don't have to increase it at the same rate as I'm pinching at the scale. So what's that look like? So I'm gonna go, and do some precedence operators here. So I'm gonna go initial height times the details, uh, let's scale times 0.35. I figured out, okay, so what I wanna do is multiply initial scale times the scale. So if I'm clicking on this and I'm this is growing, this is gonna provide me with a scale, a number like 1.25, 1.35, well, I, if I do that, it grows quite quickly. So I slow down the growth by adding a percentage of that scale. So I multiply by that. So that slows it down. Now, this is not an end all for this application. I'm just providing this as a simple math scenario for using this gesture as an example. Now, there's going to be a challenge here at the end of the tutorial. So you watch that so you can maybe pick up on what I didn't do, and maybe I could find someone with a guru or, or enough foo power to show me what I could do better. Okay, so that's gonna be a challenge at the end. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna print out the, the scale here, scale equals, and then I'll do an inline expression. And I'm gonna go details or interpolation expression dot scale. And then I'm gonna say the height is gonna be equal to, and I'm gonna say this is gonna be, I don't, I, well, I wanna do interpolation, so I'm gonna go string, and then I'll do another one, underscore height. Well, I don't need brackets because that's a single variable. It's not an expression. And then the initial height is gonna be, uh, let's say dollars, initial initial height okay so that'll give me some output in the console below what's happening here so at the end of the scale and by the way this is not going to change because I didn't set state so it's not going to change the render so I need to do this call and set state so if I go set state anonymous function there and then I'm going to paste in so that means every time it yeah, the gesture is called here, it will set the state and re-render the application. Okay, so on scale end, the, the, what I wanna do is set state in here as well. So at the end of the scale, I want to set the initial state to the new height that has been set last. And this will set my state variable and update it on the end of the scale. So assuming I once I end the state, and if it grows, it'll set the state, and then I'll be basing off my calculations on the next scaling event based on the initial, initial height again. Okay, so I'm gonna save it, 
And that's Command S. It automatically saves, but I do that because it's one habit, and two, I want to do a, a hot reload. So, okay, so what happens is here, I'm going to focus on my Android emulator, and when I focus on it on the command, I can hit Command here, and that brings up the gestures, I can do a pinch and, and a scaling here. So when I click and drag, it's going to pinch. So I'm going to click and drag, and that's pretty cool effect. So let me go over that one more time. I'm going to focus, click on it. A tap is, in other words. And when I command, it may be control on your operating system. But, so if I press command, I see the pinch. This is like moving your fingers, two fingers on, like your thumb and index and I can make it bigger. So I'm going to click and drag. So that's pretty cool. I can basically grow the text. Okay, so there's going to be a challenge here because this is not a full implementation. I ran out of time to actually try to figure out all the math and caveats to this video, but I'll show you what I'm looking for. Do you see where it just jumped there? If you could figure that out and give me the solution in the comments, I'd like to update everybody. But um, you can see I have a math problem and or API use problem. So I'm going to start it from the beginning. Yeah, but I'm achieving the goal. What I wanted to achieve in this video is one, I can show you how text can grow and two, the gesture detector and its simple use of uh, listening for those callbacks and the gestures. So if if I grow, let's let me command and oh, I forgot to mention and I wanted to show how to use this pinch uh, for scaling in the emulator because I think it's quite handy to, to develop and use all the features in the emulator. Okay, so I'm going to command, pressing on command on the Mac or control on Windows. I'm going to click and drag and that makes it larger or smaller, large, small, large, small. Now, by the way, one of the things I discovered is, is if I didn't put the gesture detector on the outer widget where it takes up the available space, I put it on, on the center widget, and you can only listen to the, where that gesture is actually inserted or put in on the tree of the hierarchy there because, or the size of the widget that it is connected to or wrapping, I should say. And so that means just keep that in mind that you should have it on the outer container where you want to observe that between the scale or rectangle of that, um, of those bounds. So I'm just keeping that in mind or just bringing that to your attention to keep in mind because I did that mistake. I put it on the wrong widget. So in this case, I wanted it the entire page. So I put it on the scaffold. So that's great. So now I can grow and, and shrink the text. So that concludes this video on auto sizing and auto scaling the text. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.